if you look at the Leicesters, the Leeds, the Ipswiches, they spread the goals around the team. It's not just yeah. their strikers that are getting the goals. It's their attacking mids, their right back, their left back. They're all chipping in with goals. And when they go forward as a team, they go forward with nine players, eight, nine players in front of the ball. We tend to break and then seven players still stay in the defensive half of the pitch. Yeah. So welcome back to Smallith Alliance FC. And I think most Blues fans would agree now that Gary Rowett has taken over for the remaining eight games that it's highly likely that we're going to see a much tighter defence. And that's good news because that's an area we've had a particular problem with this season, conceding goals and particularly making mistakes. But of course, to win games, it's not just about stopping the goals going in. We've also got to put them in the other net. We've got to score goals. And that's what we're going to be discussing in this podcast. Where are those goals going to come from in the remainder of our eight really important fixtures. So I'm going to bounce that straight over to Matt and say, Matt, where do you see us getting those goals in these remaining eight games? Yeah, I think it's a fair concern and it's I think it's a question which is on most Blue Noses' minds at the moment. Um, and I like to browse social media, I like to check our comment section and two of the themes which pop up quite a lot are a lack of a sort of warrior mentality, a lack of leadership, and the other one is where are our goals going to come from? And, and I totally get why. However, I just want to start it with, I guess, a little bit of a a reminder, I guess, of some sort. And, you know, it's really easy to get caught up in the short-term results and the short-term fixtures. And, you know, there's no denying it. We've just come off three losses. And in those three games, no goals. And in particular against Middlesbrough, no shots on targets. That was a very, very low point. And as Blues fans, it's so frustrating. And, you know, me and Dad are big Blues fans. We hear you. We, we, we read the comments. Every comment that comes in, we read it. We get just as frustrated as you do. But this team is capable of scoring goals. And this team is capable of winning games. And let's just rewind the clock a little bit earlier in the season. The week that Eustace got sacked, we beat Huddersfield 4-1. And we beat West Brom. 3-1. And fair enough, I know people say it was a different manager, yeah. it's his team, different mentality. But that two huge wins uh, there just before uh, the, the sack. And then if we just fast forward past the Rooney stage, let's just ignore that. <laughs> um, and, and, then, and then Tony Mowbray came in and he started to get a couple of wins under his, uh, under his belt. I don't know how you felt, uh, Dad and Blues fans, but when Mowbray was in charge before his health scare, I felt like we were looking up the table as opposed to looking down it at one point. And his last two games uh, before he had to take that sick leave was a 1-0 win against Blackburn and a 2-1 win against Sunderland. And I know it's been miserable this past month. I know it's been crap this past six, uh, six weeks. But we are a team that can score goals and we are a team that can uh, win games. We just need to remember that. And I think the fact that Gary Rower is at the wheel now, and fair enough, I definitely lean on the side of slightly more optimistic, but I'm happy that he's going to settle the ship at the back. He needs to instill that warrior spirit in the players, and I think we can start to move forward and, and, and score some goals. But on that specific topic about scoring goals, you know, there's a couple of things to discuss. We, we can discuss our forward strikers, we can discuss our formations, but there's a couple of big things for me. I think one... I think we rely on Stansfield way too much. <laughs> yeah, um, we haven't yeah. got enough support for him. We haven't got enough backup for Stansfield. And our decision-making for me in the final third is borderline atrocious. You know, Stansfield's making these runs and yeah. no one's picking him out. And, you know, Bakuna sometimes in the final third, he goes for a shot instead of laying off our, our strikers. Yeah. Yeah. And Tyler Roberts has done quite well since he's come back. But the decision-making he's been having, again, has been quite poor. So there's a lot to discuss in this video, but I just wanted to get that out as a bit of an introduction. But, yeah, I'm, I'm really intrigued for this game on Friday next Friday against QPR to see how Gary Rowett sort of sets us up. I'm quite excited to see that game here. I am very excited, but um, all season we have um, no, not really shown any confidence going forward. I mean, I, you know, I, I don't even want to think what would happen if we didn't have Jay Stansfield. I mean, the goals that he scored this season in particular have, uh, have won us games and, and gained us a few points. So I think without him, I think it's not unrealistic to suggest we would be in a lot worse position than we are now, even though we're not in a great position. But we're very light up front, you know, and we have been all season. Um, you know, it's one of those things that you think that the club would have identified, at least tried to do something about. You know, we've got Jay Stansfield. Um, obviously, Yuki has been coming on, particularly in the last um, eight, nine games, as a substitute, as an impact substitute. Substitute, but he's injured now, and we don't know how, whether we'll see him again for the rest of the season. So that leaves uh, Tyler Roberts as a, uh, a forward, um, Oliver Burke, Scott Hogan. Yeah. Uh, and that's pretty much it in terms of what we've seen on the pitch in the forward line. This is, that, that is not good enough for a championship no. team. You need far more strength than that. And this is a problem, isn't it? It's the lack of goals that you could argue, yeah, we have been poor defensively compared to previous seasons, but also the lack of goals have contributed to where exactly where we are now. Mm -hmm. So really, we're not in a great position and, we, and we're and we in a position now with eight games to go. 
Gary Rowett has got to work with what he's got. There's no option. Yeah, yeah. So therefore, bouncing the well, question back to you, what, what does Gary Rowett do? I tell you, before I answer that question, what was quite interesting was um, I saw that Dixon and Donovan were training with the first team, uh, and there was a couple of clips on social oh, media. Pinch point notes. Di- I, I was gonna, I was gonna drag that in. <laughs> <laughs> Dixon, I saw a shot of Dixon, yeah. uh, and he, he scored two goals. They were absolute belters. I thought. Give this kid some minutes. Have we seen Dixon at all this year, even no, for a minute? No, not no. at all, has we? So no, no. We've seen Donovan for bits and bobs. And I know during uh, Rooney's desperate time, he played him at the start, didn't he, yeah. Donovan? Because yeah. was it against Bristol City just before Christmas break? I can't remember which game it was, but Donovan came on and he was the only one putting a little bit of heart in. So Rooney played him the next game, didn't he? And there's no doubt about it, Donovan's a, a quality player, but he's a little bit weak at the moment, isn't he? You know, he needs to he needs well, to strengthen he's, 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 he's a typical young player, yeah, isn't exactly. he? You know, he, he needs time to mature to get his body strength. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and you know, and to and to mature into that sort of uh, you know, more sort of older player with the bigger body frame. That's where yeah. the younger players is really, really strong because yeah. this is you know, you can't deny the fact the championship is a very, very physical league. It is. I, I saw that as well, Matt. I saw the training video where I saw Junior Dixon. I thought, oh, hang on, you know, because a lot of blues fans, I know, I know blues fans, we look at social media, lots of blues fans have been commenting, why not give this kid a go? Yeah. We've seen that he's scored lots of goals in the under 21s and the development teams, and he's uh, so obvious, but, but that is very different from playing in a competitive championship, and he is very, very young. I don't know if I'd start him if I'm on this is my opinion. No. I don't think I don't think I would start him, but I would definitely. Um, start to get him into the first team in terms of on the bench and maybe bring him on for a few cameo appearances just to see how he gets on but from what I've read and I don't know an awful lot about him because I haven't seen him myself he, he seems a very similar type of player to Stansfield in mm-hmm. terms of his fast and pacey yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so whether that would work with Stansfield I don't know but mm. well, with, with the options we've got it's well worth a punt I believe I think Rowett's going to set us up 4-2-3-1 in the way we have been and I had a look back because I know I, I referenced earlier the Huddersfield game and the West Bond game I was just really intrigued I went back to those games and I looked at how Eustace set us up and it was 4-2-3-1 and because we're talking about attack we won't mention the defence but you had Dembele Bakuna and Miyashi feeding into Stansfield Rowett has all those uh, players at his disposal. So yeah. even back then, we're not a million miles away from the, from the players that Rowett has at his disposal. I think it's a mentality and a confidence thing as well. I think because we've gone three games now uh, without a win and without a goal, it's kind of on the players' minds that they know they haven't scored a goal. So the longer this goes on, this goal drought goes yeah. on, the more their confidence is going to go lower and yeah. lower and lower. So I think confidence is a big thing to play in it as well. I think, fair enough, we can talk about the strikers we don't have but let's talk about the attacking midfielders we do have. So we have Bakuna, we have Miyashi. Um, Dembele hasn't been playing very much, obviously, because he tends to give the ball away quite a lot. But JJ has been covering on that left hand side, and, and we fit, and, and we we change it round a lot. But Dad, how many times have we spoke about this? If you look at the Leicesters, the Leeds, is the Ipswiches. They spread the goals around the team. It's not just yeah. their strikers that are getting the goals. It's their attacking mids, their right back, their left back. They're all chipping in with goals. And when they go forward as a team, they go forward with nine players eight, nine players in front of the ball. We tend to break and then seven players still stay in the defensive half of the pitch. Yeah, yeah. And I get really frustrated. I don't know whether you've noticed this, but like I noticed it massively in the whole game away. Bakuna was going up the pitch and he was taking on seven, eight, nine players because he had no one around him. Yeah. Um, so for me, we need to start going forward as a team. We need to start getting forward in bigger numbers. And for me, actually, the attacking mid start to now need to start creating decisions, uh, sorry, chances for Stanfield by improving their decision-making because yeah. their decision-making in the final third, come on, back me up on this. It's been shocking, hasn't it's, it? It's been, ter- it's been terrible. Yeah. But, but I, th- I also think as well, because we've always been worried under uh, Rooney and actually Mowbray, who wants to play this more progressive attacking football, it's always a worry when we're going forward that we're going to be more vulnerable at the back. Now, with Gary Rowett, when he's coming, he's going to tighten us up at the back. And I think that gives us more freedom to play these types of players. Yeah. Because there's less of a risk if they lose the ball because there's more defence behind them. Mm-hmm. So I think that uh, Gary Rowett's formation and style of play will suit the likes of Bakuna yeah. and Dembele very much. Yeah. Uh, Miyoshi, I think he needs to improve, but he is a obviously got quality yeah. as well if we can play these players to support Stansfield yeah. I think that's where our goals are going to come from but I just want to bounce a question over to you um, because now that Gary Rowett's come in do you think that opens the door for Hogan to come back into the team you know we mentioned this on a previous video every manager who started uh, uh, Eustace Rooney and Mowbray all have played Hogan in their first game so he must be absolutely smashing him in, in training because he must be doing something behind closed doors um, and Hogan you know you can't knock his work rate he does put the shift in he does run he's just not good enough um, he just and, and again it's a confidence thing we saw it earlier in the season you know around the Plymouth Millwall 
uh, Norwich sort of era, that those yeah. first couple of games of the season, you know, his confidence just went through the floor. He missed that penalty. Yeah. Um, you saw him have a couple of chances that he didn't finish. And I personally hope, hope we don't, I think I think we've seen the last of Hogan personally. I, I hope we have. I hope we stick with Stansfield. Um, and the reason you just referenced is why I'm a little bit more optimistic with Gary Rowett at the wheel. Well, very much more optimistically with Gary Rowett at the wheel because he is going to set us up more compact at the back. However, that Blues fans are going to have to accept we're going back, I think, to a more used to style of football of sort of yeah. catching teams on the break. Um, so Tony Mowbray likes to be more front-footed. And we've definitely seen his style come in over his um, yeah. uh, a short period there before he's taken that extended six leave but I think we're going to get we're going to get um, back down to that used to style of football and there's no shame in that if he gets us if he gets us the results I think a lot of Blues fans will agree at this point let's just stay up in this division um, and I think we're going to be a team which absorbs and then catches on the back we'll be on the back foot a lot more than we than, than we have been we'll be out of possession a lot more than we have been however we've proven that we can win games with, with yeah. players like that and the, the only reason why I mention that and I don't mean that to sound negative by any stretch but we have the players to do that yeah. we have players which are more comfortable on the back foot we have players in a team which are more comfortable catching teams on the break here and there so I actually think we're going to do it. I really do. It. And hence the results uh, video that we just put out, the predictions. I think with the way Rowett's going to set us up, I think we're going to be okay. But I think the big thing for us is the reception to Stansfield, the decision-making yeah. of those attacking mids. Yeah. And I think we will see uh, Dembele a bit more. I think we will see Bakuna in the middle a little bit more. I think Rowett will want to get that creativity as much as he possibly can. I mean, I'm speculating there. That's just my thoughts. Um, and I would love to see a little, a little bit of Donovan, a little bit of Dixon moving forward yeah. as well. I mean, I'm not talking full games here, you know, 20 minutes here, 20 minutes there. Um, and that's where we lack, you know, Ipswich, I forgot what the stat is, but they win the majority of their games or they score the majority of their goals in like 65 minutes plus. We're a team after 65 minutes where we go down, aren't we? Yeah. Whereas if we can get our subs right and if we can get a bit of fresh energy with your likes of Donovan's and your Dixon's, um, I think we'll be okay. And... Um, yeah, it, it is a worry. Definitely the lack of goals is a worry. Um, but I think let's get that reception to Stansfield. Let's start making cle more clever decisions in that, in that final third. And I think the goals will come. I think that's the key. I think the key to me is the decision making. It's been, it's been awful. We, yeah, we've we've had uh, you know times where we're Blues fans. You know, you would have been so frustrated when you know that there is a simple pass to play after somebody else, yet the player tries to go around three players or wax the ball into the air. That is frustrating. So the decision making, uh, also as well, just to sort of answer my own question, is that um, I think that um, Hogan, um, we will probably definitely see him on the bench. And the only way I think he's going to be getting a start is if Gary Rowett decides to go four four two, which yeah. I, I'm not 100 percent convinced he will. I don't think he but will. I do think on the basis that Jukovic is injured, yeah. I think we will see Hogan on the uh, bench. Uh, I think you know, as far as I'm concerned, you know, you know, with the greatest respect, Oliver Burke is done at Blues. I can't see how we would get him back into the team. And just to repeat what you said as well, I would like to see some appearances from particularly likes of uh, Junior Dixon mm -hmm. uh, for the rest of the season, you know, just coming on. What do you think, Blues fans? I mean, we uh, obviously are raising this issue because we think that, you know, we haven't been at our best definitely going forward and we haven't scored loads and loads of goals. We've made bad decisions, but we're at a point now in the season where we've, we've got to get that right because it's okay keeping it tight at the back. But if we don't get those goals, we're not going to win games what do you think let us know in the comments below it'd be great to know what your thoughts about you what your thoughts are about the forward line and what you think the best forward line is and uh, maybe react to some of the comments that me and matt have made today just pop a comment uh, below and let us know what your thoughts are uh, we'd also like you to uh, like the video so if you want to give us a thumbs up that's fantastic and also don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already to make sure you don't miss any future content all about birmingham city so hopefully you've enjoyed the video and myself and matt will see you on the next video